Hello, this is video number four in the series Mastering the Nkosi System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the Nkosi System Engineering Professional Exam. Video number four covers section 4.3 of the System Engineering Handbook, um, and that's the uh, section that covers System Requirements Definition Process. My name is Lance Sherry, and I will be your tour guide for this chapter. As we said in earlier chapters, the, um, the purpose of the System Engineering Handbook is to document a system life cycle process and activities that can deal with the development of complex systems in a, in, in a complex development and deployment and operational life cycle. There are a total of 59 engineering life cycle processes and activities. Uh, and they're categorized into uh, seven groups in the System Engineering Handbook. The, uh, the topic of this video is the System Requirements Definition Process, and that's part of the technical processes that's, uh, ident that's in Section 4 of the System Engineering Handbook. So the learning objectives for this section are, what are system requirements? And then items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it answers questions about what is the purpose of the, of the process, what are the outputs, inputs of the process, and what are the activities that are executed in the system requirements definition process. Item number 6 uh, covers a little bit of information about what are the attributes of requirements, and there are 18 of those. And then uh, items 7 and 8 are um, characteristics of well-written individual and set of requirements. And finally, learning objective number nine is the content of the system requirements specification. So, so system requirements are the currency of system engineers. This is the, um, the thing that we use to manage the development of a very complex system. And in that way, the, re the system requirements are statements or specifications for the performance of the system in the mission in the operating environment. So system requirements um, generally come in four flavors, uh, and that is a description of the intention, the description of the behavior of the system, um, the description of the flow of information through the system, and then a description of the underlying architecture components or functions. So interestingly enough, the, these different ways of looking at a system, different lenses for looking at the same system, are uh, derived from Aristotle's four causes, uh, where um, he identified uh, final, efficient, formal, and material as the way to think about uh, systems. The system requirements, of course, are used by pretty much everybody. Um, in, in many ways, the system requirements are the official contract which all the different groups that participate in system development and system deployment and operation are bound by. So um, the system requirements, of course, are used by designers and implementers. Uh, testers have to have requirements in order to test to. The requirements are part of the legal contracts, and um, that's for uh, the supply chain. And then, of course, the requirements are also used by operators for the purposes of developing training manuals and so on. So the basic, uh, the standard way of defining a requirement for a system is shown on the bottom, and it says the XXX system shall fill in the blank. And so that represents a system requirement. The, the, system the system requirements definition process, as defined in the System Engineering Handbook, has the purpose to transform the stakeholder user-oriented view that was the result of the, um, the previous process, the stakeholder needs and requirements definition process, into desired capabilities, into a technical view of the solution that meets the operational needs of the end user. So we're going to take all of the information we gathered from the stakeholders and we're going to convert that into a holistic description of the um, intention, behavior, uh, uh, function, and um, architecture of the system. And of course, all of that is formalized in the system requirement specification. 
The overall process is uh, summarized in uh, figure 4.5. On the right-hand side, the output is a system requirement specification, the uh, SYRS, and the requirements validation criteria. So as you said, those requirements are kind of uh, English language descriptions of the system shell, and it's also possible to use LML and SysML diagrams to support those. The, um, the activities that, that are defined by the System Engineering Handbook are kind of the sequence of things that you need to do to generate a system requirement specification. You need to prepare, you need to define, you need to analyze and manage. So uh, standard ways of, of doing any, any uh, activity. And then on the left-hand side are the, uh, the set of information that's required. Um, and of course, in everything and everything that's useful for the purpose of requirements should be in, the, in that list. Um, so just to say a couple more words about the process um, in terms of inputs. So important inputs in addition to the life cycle concepts and the system function identification and stakeholder requirements that came from the previous process are also things like standards and regulations and any other constraints associated with the operation and deployment of the system that should be taken into account by the requirements. The, um, the activities, uh, obviously defining system requirements and uh, analyzing them are the main activities. And then within the outputs, you've got the uh, system function definition and the requirements and the interfaces along with the verification and validation uh, criteria. So the system requirements are, are typically English language description of the system shell. Um, and then that's also possible to support that with LML, SysML diagrams, and any figures or tables that uh, are deemed necessary. The, um, the system requirements specification is the third, the third specification. Uh, we started off with the business requirements specification that was used as an input to the stakeholder requirement specification that yields the system requirement specification uh, that's developed uh, via this, this process. All right, so that's the, the, the process. And just to say a couple words about uh, requirements attributes. So we stated that the requirement is typically the system shall fill in the blank. And in addition to that, there is a set of attributes that are typically attached to that requirement. Uh, the first um, items, 1.1 and, uh, and, uh, and well, 1 1.1, um, identify the fact that many times the requirements kind of form a hierarchy of requirements. And so 1.1 identifies who the parent requirement, what, what the parent requirement was. Um, uh, 1.4 identifies the, the peer requirements. So um, there is also other information that we'd, you'd want to trace to that, the source of the requirements, the verification method, verification requirements, and so on. So all of those things are, are traced back to an individual requirement. The requirement also has um, items 2 through, uh, through 12 associated with it. Um, some important ones are the criticality of the requirement, uh, the risk associated with that requirement, and then very important, especially on large projects where there's turnover in staffing and personnel and the requirements are passed down to the supply chain is number nine, and that is to identify the rationale for the requirement. Of course, capturing all this information and keeping track of it is a, is a massive task uh, uh, with lots of opportunities for errors. And so uh, model-based system engineering tools have been developed, which for the purpose of requirements are um, our databases that allow one to manage the traceability of, of requirements and keep them uh, consistent and, uh, and manage the change control and configuration management of those requirements. So those are all the attributes of a requirement. Um, writing requirements is, is very difficult and uh, takes years and years of, of practice. Um, a good individual um, requirement has the, f the following characteristics. One is it's necessary. You wouldn't want to include a requirement that uh, wasn't uh, required or important for the system. Um, number two is absolutely critical, and that is it should be implementation dependent. So the requirement shouldn't specify what type of solution, what type of technology, what type of specific 
uh, software algorithm is used uh, to meet the requirement. We, we say that the requirement should be the what, not the how. So number two, implementation de independent refers to making sure that the requirement says what should be done and avoid saying what, what, how, um, avoid saying how it should be done. Um, so all the other requirements are unambiguous, make sense. Uh, the requirement should be complete. It shouldn't leave any information hanging. Um, it should be standalone or singular in the sense that it's not um, required to have other requirements, not joined with other requirements in order to imply the performance, uh, behavior, intent, architecture of the system. Number six, obviously it should be achievable. Uh, Number seven, absolutely very important, is to be verifiable. In other words, that the requirement can be tested. And so one of the criteria for a verifiable requirement is that the requirement have a quantitative measure of performance. So that way a tester can go and put the system uh, in a scenario in such a way that you could verify that the system meets that uh, quantified requirement. And then, of course, the requirement uh, should also conform to standards and regulations and so on. So that's a summary of the, uh, the top eight um, characteristics of a good individual system requirement. Um, so implementation independent, focus on the what and not the how, and verifiable, make it quantitative. Um, so the requirements also are grouped together, and uh, when they are sets of requirements, they should be complete. In other words, nothing's missing. Uh, they should be consisting. You don't have two requirements that are in conflict with each other. Um, they should represent uh, a, a system design, a system requirement that's feasible and affordable, and then, of course, that it's bounded. So that brings us uh, to the end of this video. So here's an opportunity to see what you know about system requirements definition process. Um, so at this point, it would be a, a good idea to pause the video, uh, get a pencil and paper, and see if you can jot down the answers to these questions, uh, one through seven. And then when you're, when you're done with that, you can release and go on to the next slide which has the answers uh, to, those, uh, to those questions. So this is the um, end of the video. We want to thank you for uh, taking the time to go through this. The next video is the fourth in the technical processes, and that's the architecture definition process. Um, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, we'd much appreciate it if you could hit that uh, up thumb Thumbs up. Thank you.